For a very long time, humans have imagined what life may be like in other worlds. Thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, the most powerful telescope in existence, that question can finally be answered. While observing the closest star system to us, Proxima Centauri, which is only four light years away, scientists have noticed some peculiar anomalies from one of the planets in the system, Proxima b. These anomalies, called artificial lights, have puzzled the best minds in the scientific community. But what are they? Do these lights suggest the existence of intelligent life on the planet? Join us as we explore James Webb's terrifying discovery of city lights that changes everything. The only life that we are currently aware of is on Earth. Since the beginning of civilization, people have questioned whether there is life elsewhere in the universe. To carry out such an interstellar search, American astronomers Jill Tarter and Thomas Pearson launched the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI project in 1984. The project's objective is to gather space-borne radio signals. Radio waves can travel farther, and are therefore more likely to be detected by the 42 radio telescopes that make up the unique Allen Telescope Array in the Californian Cascade Mountains because they are less dispersed or absorbed than other types of radiation. But in the past 30 years, no verifiable alien signal has been discovered. After that, the James Webb Space Telescope's successful launch aided in the quest. In order to examine a range of distant undiscovered planets orbiting far-off stars, the largest telescope in the world, which is floating roughly a million miles from Earth and outfitted with incredibly sensitive detectors, will be used. Twenty years ago, there were no known planets outside those in our solar system. But since then, more than 4,000 planets, also referred to as exoplanets, have been discovered orbiting other stars. According to NASA, the universe may contain trillions of exoplanets. The earliest signs of life beyond our solar system may be found in extraterrestrial plant life. The Galileo spacecraft turned its equipment back toward Earth when it was en route to Jupiter and found a definite indication of the presence of plants. The instrument detected the vegetation red edge, VRE, biosignature. A mix of red and infrared lights reflected by plants. For instance, a planet like Earth that is covered in a jungle should have a strong and easy-to-detect VRE signal. The JWST will measure the VRE of far-off Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around stars. They could be important signs of life in the exoplanet atmosphere. When sunlight crosses a planet star, the JWST may be able to detect it as it enters its atmosphere. The light's missing wavelengths would then be discovered via spectroscopy. Atoms and molecules in the atmosphere absorb specific wavelengths, creating a characteristic fingerprint that the JWST can recognize. This method may be used to determine the composition of the atmosphere and whether life is possible. It is likely that life could exist on Earth-sized planets with an atmosphere similar to our own, with a predominance of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. By looking for elements that aren't usually present, one may be able to detect technological life. Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, generated for use in refrigeration and cleaning products, would probably be noticeable to aliens monitoring Earth's atmosphere from a distance. If the JWST found CFCs in planetary atmospheres, that would be a clear indication of civilization. Actually, life on exoplanets might not even remotely resemble life on Earth. Sometimes even earthly life, like extremophile species, can seem alien. This is a group of organisms, primarily bacteria, that can endure environments where other living things would perish. Some can withstand heat up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Some can withstand colds as low as minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of them can survive in strong acids with pH levels below 3, while others can be found on Earth in places where we would not expect to find any life at all. But since planets like Earth are more likely to support life than planets with severe temperatures or acidic conditions, it could be a good idea to start with those first. Prime candidates could have temperatures that allow liquid water to exist on their surfaces and or orbit a stable star. The classification for our Sun is a yellow G-type star. These stars are less common and typically have shorter lives in our universe. The likelihood of studying planets orbiting around red dwarf stars which are more frequent and have lower luminosities and temperatures than the sun, is higher. 
There is more time for the formation of life and evolution to produce complex life forms because these stars have significantly longer lifespans. Around 40 light years away from Earth, the TRAPPIST-1 planetary system will be the subject of JWST's first mission. It revolves around a calm red dwarf star with seven Earth-sized rocky planets. Three of the rocky planets in the so-called habitable zone might have liquid water on their surfaces. Despite having a much smaller and colder mass than our Sun, the TRAPPIST-1 star radiates light that is similar to that of Earth. The best chance for humans to see city lights outside the solar system is Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star that is 4.25 light-years from the Sun and our nearest star. Proxima is about 600 times fainter than the Sun, so a planet must be 20 times closer to it than Earth is to the Sun in order for it to support life based on liquid water. In August 2016, Astronomers discovered a planet with 1.3 Earth masses in this habitable region, in a Goldilocks-like habitable zone where the light intensity is just right to melt water. Proxima b orbits Proxima Centauri. It's possible that Proxima b is an airless, lifeless planet, given that it orbits its red dwarf star at a distance of only 4.6 million miles. The distance between the Sun and Earth is 93 million miles. The planet Proxima b is in a close orbit that exposes it to strong solar winds that can completely destroy its atmosphere. It also provides enough sunlight for temperatures and liquid water that are similar to those on Earth. Because of its close proximity to the star, Proxima b is thought to be tidally locked, always showing the same side to the star as the moon does in reference to Earth. Proxima Centauri is about one-eighth the mass of the sun and burns far less brightly. For a planet so near to its star, just 5% of the Earth's sun distance may be anticipated to be a red-hot cinder. Liquid water could easily exist on Proxima b as long as the planet has an atmosphere to hold heat in since the total energy reaching it from the sun is only 65% of what Earth receives. However, the planet is not especially friendly to life. It is most likely tidally locked, which means that it always faces the same direction toward the star and produces permanent day and night sides with significant temperature changes. The planet also receives 100 times as much high-energy radiation as Earth does because of its proximity to Proxima Centauri, including X-ray and ultraviolet light. Proxima b is also bombarded with high-energy particles during star flare-ups unless it has a shielding magnetic field similar to Earth's. However, there are certain realistic conditions that could make it a pleasant world. Sadly, models suggest that the atmosphere of tidally locked planets may be susceptible to rapid collapse due to the freezing out of volatile gases on the night side. Our planet's atmosphere can be replenished by volcanic activity, and for planets with strong magnetic fields, this atmosphere is less likely to escape. Because we don't know anything about Proxima b's volcanic activity or magnetic field strength, we can't even guess whether or not the planet has an atmosphere. But since an atmosphere presupposes the existence of seas, and the two taken together presuppose the existence of life, we are desperate to know if Proxima b has a sophisticated civilization. It might have solar panels covering the day side to generate electricity to light and warm the night side, which would otherwise be too cold and dark for comfortable habitation. The discovery of Proxima b has triggered a race to determine if it crosses its star's face as seen from Earth. These transits would let scientists determine the planet's size and mass, which would then enable them to determine its density. Knowing that would validate the planet's rocky makeup and provide information on the materials used to create those rocks. During a transit, starlight might disclose the nature of the planet by passing through its atmosphere. But the likelihood that the orbit will be in the right alignment for scientists to see a transit is merely 1 in 12%. The star's propensity to flare also complicates matters. Astronomer David Kipping of Columbia University says the star is tricky as its heat causes a rocky planet to absorb sunlight and radiate it as infrared light. However, rocky planets produce a distinct type of infrared radiation from stars like Proxima Centauri. Additionally, the James Webb Space Telescope was created specifically to study infrared light. Proxima b's infrared heat signature is the key to identifying the planet's atmosphere. Additionally, the infrared portion of the spectrum has a strong affinity for Hubble's successor, possibly permanently. Researchers will be able to measure the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere, constrain the abundance of different elements like carbon and oxygen, and estimate the temperature of the atmosphere with depth using the spectrum that Webb is planning to observe. 
they can use the data to draw conclusions about the planet's overall composition as well as how, when, and where it formed. The best fit model, represented by the blue line on the graph, accounts for the data, the known characteristics of WASP, 96b and its star, as well as the ascribed properties of the atmosphere. Modern web design has made it possible for these measurements to have such exceptional clarity and detail. The 270-ton gold PL, aided mirror array of the JWST the size of a tennis court, can capture much more light than the Hubble mirror could. The telescope will be able to detect more minute changes in brightness as a result, and the spectrograph will be able to collect more starlight that has passed through the atmosphere. Webb will be able to detect light from Proxima b and separate it from the stellar emission with a precision of one part in 10,000 by carefully watching Proxima Centauri as the planet rotates around it. Webb is able to detect the distinct infrared signature that is produced by the air and surfaces of an Earth-like world because the radiation can be observed separately. According to Avi Loeb, an astrophysicist at Harvard University, the spectrum of an artificial nightside would likely exhibit prominent lines resulting from the interaction between oxygen molecules and light in addition to the specific wavelength of light emitted by sodium and LED bulbs. Even if Proxima b turns out to be uninhabitable, there may be other stars in the Proxima Centauri system with planets that could potentially support life. One of the other known planets in the system is Proxima c, which is a super-Earth-sized planet that orbits farther out from Proxima Centauri. In the coming years, Advancements in telescope technology and space exploration missions, such as those planned by NASA and other space agencies, may bring us closer to discovering and understanding alien life in distant star systems. While the presence of city lights on Proxima b remains speculative, the continuous exploration and study of exoplanets like Proxima b keep the possibility of finding extraterrestrial civilizations alive. The search for life beyond our solar system is a journey that inspires curiosity fuels scientific discovery, and holds the potential to reshape our understanding of our place in the universe.